What if I told you it took the same amount of time to 3D print this one model as it did to 3D print all of these? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how it's done. Before we dive all the way in, let's quickly talk about some of the terminology we're going to use. Time per print means how long did it take for the printer to complete a job. And in this case, this model took 3 hours and 8 minutes to print, meaning it takes 3 hours and 8 minutes to print one of them. However, I also printed 22 of them simultaneously, which brings your time per part down to 8 minutes and 32 seconds. So what is time to part? That in manufacturing is typically referred to as cycle time, and cycle time is the average time it takes to produce one item. So you're looking at production time over produced units. So here, 188 minutes and 22 units means a cycle time, or time per part, of 8 minutes and 32 seconds apiece. For this video, I'm using the model Herald the Town Guard from Loot Studios. It's an awesome print, it's pre-supported, and it just looks really cool, and it has a lot of detail even at a 32mm scale. The printer I'm using is the Elegoo Saturn. It's a rock solid resin 3D printer, and I'm using it with Anycubics Craftsman resin. Here's the model in Chitu box, and we're gonna go ahead and get this print set up and running, and then talk a little bit about how this process works. So once we've sliced the file, it's been converted into a series of layers. From there, we can actually see in Chitu box the time estimate. So we've got 2.8 grams of material and a total time of three hours and eight minutes. So once that's been set up and exported, we can go ahead and get our resin 3D printer prepped and ready, and then start the print. One of the features of the Elegoo Saturn is the LCD screen on the front of the printer actually shows what is being exposed per layer. So here we can see we're only exposing just the very center of the build platform, which is exactly where our model is. And as the print continues, we can start to see that model growing. Just as predicted through Chitu Box, this print took three hours and eight minutes to complete. This is also a pretty good reminder, if you're not subscribed to this channel already, go ahead and subscribe and ring that bell if you want to see more videos on resin 3D printing. Okay, great. So now that the part is finished, we can go ahead and remove it, and I'm doing something a little bit different for this video. I just installed the Fulliflex resin bed on my Elegoo Saturn, which is a flexible plate that allows parts to pop right off. It's actually a really handy tool, and I use this on filament printers all the time. I love flexible beds, and having a flexible bed for a resin printer, it's a great way to pop the part off without necessarily damaging the bed. Once the part's been removed from the platform, we need to remove the support material, and this is probably the most time-consuming part of the process from an operator standpoint. Once the support material's been removed, we have to wash and then cure the model. So not counting the operator time, just the cycle time of the part, we're looking at three hours and eight minutes per print job to make one part. So how can we improve on that? Here we can see in Chitu Box, I have 24 models laid out on the bed. This covers the bed almost corner to corner. Just as a quick best practice, you'll notice I've left small gaps in between all of the base rafts. That's by design and it prevents the cross-sectional width of that first layer, creating too much suction on the FEP film. Because the print time on a masked SLA printer like the Elegoo Saturn is dependent on the height of the part, our print time is still 3 hours and 8 minutes. You'll notice on the front screen of the Elegoo Saturn, the LCD looks a little bit different than our first print. Here we can see that each layer that's exposed covers the entire print area. This means we're really taking advantage of that full print area, and we're printing out as many parts as possible each print job. This means we've reduced our cycle time as much as possible and maximized the efficiency of the printer. Once the print job had finished, I removed the build platform and I noticed something a little unusual. I'd originally sliced 24 models, so four rows of six, but two of them didn't actually print out. Sometimes theory and practice can diverge, so we're going to be looking at the practical number of parts printed instead of the theoretical maximum that we should have been able to print. The full flex bed makes removing these parts pretty easy too. I just gave it a quick bend and then shuffled them all off the plate. Most of them were held on by the surface tension of the resin on that first layer, but it was pretty easy to remove them. I'm using the Mercury X wash and cure station, and something I thought was sort of interesting was that the cycle time of the washing process is the same if you're washing one part or 20. Unfortunately, support removal is a different story, and each part had to have the support removed independently of the others. I thought it was kind of interesting at the end of this process how much support material I had left. It felt like kind of a lot, so I put it on a scale to measure it and get a better understanding of how much support material was used during the printing process, and it came out to 31 grams. For context, that's about the mass of a 9-volt battery. 
Just like the wash and rinse process, it takes the same amount of time to cure 22 models as it does to cure one. So I went ahead and put all 22 models in the Mercury X curing station and just cured them all simultaneously. And there you have it. Now we have 22 models printed in the same amount of time that it would take to print one. So let's take a step back and review what we've learned here. The time per print for each of these batches was identical because the print time is based on the height of the tallest layer. But the time per part, or cycle time, drops precipitously as you start to add these extra models. So instead of 3 hours and 8 minutes to print a single one, by printing 22 simultaneously, we brought that cycle time down to 8 minutes and 32 seconds. If you're interested in maximizing the output of your resin 3D printer without sacrificing print quality, adding additional parts is an excellent way to solve that problem. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this process, so make sure to leave me a comment below and let me know, is this something that you plan on using? As always, thanks for watching and have fun printing.